Welcome back to the Motorhome Map podcast. I'm Keith Gooden and our expert, as usual, Motorhome Matt Sims. Welcome, Matt. Hey, hey, how are you, Keith? You well? I'm fine. Good. Uh, it's, it's great being here again with you. It is, yeah. Uh, we've had some great reactions to the uh, podcast uh, over the last month. It's hard to believe it only started, what, uh, the end of last year, beginning of this year? Just before Christmas, wasn't it? First it, one? It was. Yeah. And it's going great guns. Uh, you've got some news, of course. Uh, you're are going to be at the big show in October. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> the big show indeed, yeah, it's the Motorhome and Caravan Show at the National Exhibition Centre in October, uh, and we have a stand. We're going to take the podcast, we're going to recreate our studio here uh, on the stand at the show, uh, and we're there for the full week from Tuesday to Sunday, and meeting lots of old friends, lots of industry commentators, industry experts, and of course you, the listener, we hope. Uh, so please, if you're going to the show, do come and say hi. We're, we are going to be doing lots of interviews as well, people's take on the show, talking to them about their motorhome, camper van, caravan, their adventures. So if you've got a story you want to share and you want us to come and share that with us at the show, we'd love to hear it. And hopefully it will give us lots of great comedy content for the podcast going forward. Now, we record these uh, podcasts ahead of time, so tickets may be sold out, but I would recommend you, if you can, uh, to get on the website uh, for the show at the NEC in October uh, and see if you can get some tickets and when you do come along uh, like Matt says you know we're not going to be there just for show he wants to speak to you he wants to speak to experts he wants to hear from you as consumers and motorhomers because we're nothing without you so get along say hello and be on the podcast yeah do and can I share a little secret we've actually got some tickets to give away Really? The, 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 tickets, the tickets sold out for the February show really quickly. And there were thousands of people that couldn't go as a result. People who'd gone for years, who just turned up, bought a ticket on the door, walked in. You, can't, you couldn't do that in February. It's expected that the show's going to sell out again very fast. Uh, and uh, the organisers very kindly said we would love to give some tickets away via the podcast. So we've said, great. So what, how are we going to do that yet? I'm not sure. Uh, the tickets aren't with us yet. But stay tuned, listen in, because they will come uh, and we will have some tickets to give away. So you have to wait for a future episode to find out how you can get hold of them. That's fantastic. I've got a great idea for a competition. Send me £50 <laughs> and I'll put you in a drawer. <laughs> I don't think that one will fly. There's probably rules it. around that. Yeah, yeah, there probably There's is. lots of rules around <laughs> you. <laughs> Let's get on with the main subject today. It's campsite etiquette. Yeah. what you should do when you turn up onto that campsite with your motorhome or your caravan, how you should behave, the good things, the, the bad things. Now, listen, if I turned up on the uh, campsite with my motorhome, I would definitely do the wrong thing. And, and that's the thing. When, when, if you're a newbie to, to something such as motorhoming or caravanning, you do worry about doing the wrong thing, and everybody does. But there's no shame in that, is there? No, none at all. We all did it for the first time once. Like anything, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a learning curve. And the first time you do it, it's a massive learning curve. Uh, but the, the great thing is the other people on the campsite are going to love to help you. They're going to welcome you. And as soon as they realise this is your first time, they will, I'm sure, love to help you. It's a really friendly community that you've just become part of. So the idea of this conversation, I hope, Keith, is that for the listener who's maybe never done this before, they're going to learn something. And maybe there are people who've done it for years. I'm sure there'll be something you'll pick up and go, yeah, I never thought of that. Uh, I remember someone once asked me, they were hiring a motorhome from us, and they said, when we get there, do we drive on or do we reverse onto the pitch? And I chuckled and thought, well, what, what a, a great question and a sort of daft question. I mean, it depends where the view is, doesn't it? It depends how the pitch is located. But it's a re it was a really valid concern for this couple. And, and I said, well, consider the view. You've got the windscreen. What do you want to look at? And really, it doesn't matter. Unless the campsite have an opinion and they want to tell you which way to drive on to the pitch, then it really is up to you. Um, so how you park on the pitch is a really, really important thing. The campsite may have rules around that, so check with them. So I've arrived, I've got through the gate, they've let me in, I'm going up to the pitch. I don't have to worry about parking uh, forward or reverse. I suppose it makes a difference, uh, you know, where services are in the pitch, does so it? So back up a bit, you've arrived. Yes. The first thing you should do is check if there's a warden on site and announce your arrival. So check in, because they will have allocated you, probably allocated you a pitch, a pitch number. 
So a spot that is going to be your holiday base. And go and check into their reception. It will vary from campsite to campsite. Some have brick-built reception areas, you know, the bigger campsites certainly. Uh, and others will be a warden in a tent, you know, and, and there's a tiny sign hanging outside of it that says warden. Some won't have any reception at all. It's a blackboard and your name's chalked on it with a number. It really will vary depending on the campsite you're on. So make sure you know what pitch you're meant to be on. Announce your arrival. The next thing to think about is water. So before you go to your pitch, do you need to fill up your ledger vehicle with water? Now, your campsite pitch may not have a tap on it. It's unlikely you'll have a tap unless you've bought some super premium pitch that's got facilities on. You may then need to take the motorhome camper uh, to the tap uh, to fill it up. The number of times that we've gone to the pitch, set everything up and gone, oh, need water. And then we've got to unhook everything and drive off the levelling ramps and go and put water in it. But you've got one of those great um, water carrier things that, they, so, that that you sell here, which I just think are fantastic. It's it's like it's like like a, a, a garden roller, and you fill it full of water. So you, so you take it empty along to where you get your your water. You fill it full, and, and and then you can pull it or push it back. And I just think it's the greatest invention. They are until you want to empty them into the motorhome. So they're called an aqua roll. And they're traditionally used by caravanners. So a caravan doesn't, older caravans certainly don't have onboard water tanks, whereas motorhomes and a lot of camper vans do. So an aqua roll is a great way of yeah, g- getting water from the tap full back to your pitch because you can roll it with the handle. And then you need a pump to get it from there into the vehicle. Now, motorhomes generally have an onboard water tank that you fill. So you shove the hose in the fill point, fill the motorhome up, and then you've got your, your water and then you go to, your, to go to your pitch. One thing about an aqua roll is if you're parking a camper van or a caravan that needs an aqua roll, is make sure, please, you park it to leave room for the aqua roll at the edge of the pitch. How you go, just going back to parking on the pitch, be mindful of that kind of line that is your perimeter and leave space for an aqua roll to sit, for the waste tank to sit. If you, maybe you're putting up a um, windbreak, leave room for the guy ropes. Don't let the guy ropes go on to the neighbour's pitch. It's just it's bad form. You know, it's, it's bad practice. So be mindful that's your space uh, and park considerately. Um, so we sorted water we've then gone to the pitch it might be you want to walk to the pitch first if you're new to driving you might be nervous about towing the caravan through the campsite or driving the motorhome through the campsite go and walk to the pitch go and find it and go and suss it out and work out how you're going to get there some campsites will drive your caravan using their own little vehicle it might be a tiny tractor and they will tow the caravan onto the pitch to stop the risk of you causing any damage to it or to anyone else So you've got to the pitch and then it's a question of levelling up, so getting it level. Um, You've parked considerately, you've considered your perimeter and you want to get the motorhome or camper flat. Um, And we've gone through the accessories before in a previous episode and one of them was levelling ramps, they're really useful. Not all pitches are going to be flat, some are going to be gravel, some are going to be grass. Uh, Some will be laid to concrete, they're really posh. They're not always flat though Uh, and as we've discussed before, most motorhomes don't sit flat the nose is lower than the back because of the way the chassis is built and the weight of the engine at the front and so on so you want to level them up and get it level and that means you're going to sleep better the showers and the sinks are going to empty and you won't lose your gin and tonic across the table most importantly the tomatoes won't roll into the sink (laughs) (laughs) i'm sticking with the (laughs) gnt so we're we're on uh, we're parked we've got some water um uh, we're having a fantastic time because we aren't stepping over the line into our neighbour's pitch. We've done uh, all the right things. What's the one big no-no that, that, that you can do when when, when you go? What's, what's the absolute thing that annoys everybody every single time? Oh, noise. For me, noise. I think just don't be noisy, <laughs> especially if it's late. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm not sure there's one big thing. Uh, something that does annoy campsites is when if you arrive in a group and you go to the pitch and you've booked cleverly two or three pitches next to each other and you just park up in a U and you create your kind of environment. Um, there are many campsites that don't have an issue with this at all. We used to go away with our friends in their motorhomes as a group of three, four, even five units. And we would tell the campsite we were doing that. Some campsites won't allow you to book if you're doing that because they think it's just going to be a big party. We 
befriended a campsite and they knew that we you know just had young kids and we were just a group of parents looking to get away together uh, and so they would always book us together and we would create a fantastic environment with a central gazebo and a central barbecue and so on but you need to ask before you do that parking uh, any in any way other than straight onto a pitch so parking in a u can be a no-no uh, and that does annoy campsite wardens um, because it's you know they might have stopped someone else doing it and and you've done it and it's not fair but um, isn't the general feel a holiday feel aren't people a little bit noisy having a good time don't they want to party are, are these sites just you know uh, well, like I, churches <laughs> Churches. We can do have a sing song, <laughs> have a morning prayer time. Why not? Go for it. So no, I'm not being boring when I say that. No, I mean, are. when you no, I am. All right, maybe I am boring. But I, I've seen it before, where you know, family a family arrives and the kids are excited. I mean, I've you know, I've got four kids, and when they were younger, they were very, very excited. But it's just trying to manage that so you're not making a huge impact into the campsite. You know, you've turned up on a campsite and you've not assessed. What is the level of noise on this campsite? And if it is full of retired couples who are having a really quiet afternoon and you've turned up, like we would turn up like the Waltons. Yeah, my four kids would pour out and we've often got friends with us as well. And you can imagine the impact we have and we change the dynamic on that site. So it's just being considerate. Um, and I think turning up and you know shouting and so on, it, 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 there's no need for that. Um, so just be considerate. If it's appropriate to be noisy, go for it, Shaq. You know, um, uh, what we would tend to do is we get the one of the first things we do when we arrive is I get the kids on their bikes or with a football into a field where they can kick a ball. And there are sometimes rules around ball games as well. So be mindful of that. But I would try and distract the kids, leaving me uh, to get everything set up. Um, and then eventually they'll come back, you know, Dad, we're bored, when's tea? <laughs> you know, or whatever is thereafter. Uh, and by then, hopefully, we've got levelled up, we've hooked up. Uh, that's another thing as well, running your cable considerately. Um, the orange electrical cable, normally they're orange, so that they're visible. That's one of the reasons they're orange. Uh, and making sure you're not running that across someone else's campsite. And please, when you're driving to your pitch, this happened to a friend of mine, uh, it was a, a horse event, and so it wasn't an official campsite. Someone drove straight through the middle of their campsite pitch, and she'd gone and bought these lovely LED fairy lights. These were a big deal for Jules. If you're listening, Jules, you'll love this story being shared. And they drove clean over them, <laughs> smashed them. And, yeah, there's more to the story, which I won't share, but it was a bit of a disaster for Jules. She loved her fairy lights. <laughs> <laughs> so don't walk through someone else's pitch. Don't drive through it. I suppose you're on a pitch, at, you know, there's white lines there, and as human beings, we are very territorial. Aren't we are. We? Yeah, we are. And, and two years ago, we were very territorial. Windbreaks were a number one selling product uh, as people wanted to create their own COVID bubble. Uh, and they're still really popular. Um, windbreaks can be antisocial, but they can serve a great purpose, especially if you've got a dog or a cat. Uh, maybe you've taken the ferret. I don't know. <laughs> but you want to create an, a safe environment. Kids even as well, and you just want to contain them, especially younger ones. So it's just being mindful. You know, if you're going to build a barrier to your neighbour, you know, make sure they don't perceive you as rude maybe you know it, people are incredibly friendly on campsites i know that we've had people come back from higher holidays and one of the first questions the team will always ask them is how was it you know, tell us about your trip oh no not for us didn't like it mm. what do you mean well we arrived and this guy came over and offered us cups of tea <laughs> he offered to help and was asking us about it obviously the motorhome's got motorhome hire written on it he was asking us where we'd hide it, and it's like, just go away, leave us alone. Mind your own business. And then in the evening, they're cooking steak on the barbecue. They brought steak over. I said, this sounds like amazing camps. Like, where was this? Are they still there? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like it at all. And I think the reality for this couple is they spent their life looking down at their phones, and just and they lived in central London or just outside of London. And I think for them, it was a shock that the rest of the world was actually a really friendly place because where they hung out. You know, and they, they commented this was their view is that we're just not used to it and we didn't like the fact that this guy was being so friendly uh, and he said we were very uncomfortable and, and so you know it just isn't a, pa a pastime that we want to pursue. Yeah, if you've ever been in London, been on the tube, nobody talks to each other. Uh, and by the way, uh, just a quick note, uh, a windbreak will not protect you from COVID-19. <laughs> That's true. <Yeah. laughs> Other don'ts, I suppose, if you've got dogs, 
why can't somebody breed something which is sort of halfway between a cat and a dog? Do you know what I mean? So, you know, it comes up, it greets you when you, you come well, like home. A, it, it takes a stick back, but it goes and poos in somebody else's garden. A cog. Yeah. <laughs> a cog. Dat. <laughs> Dat. Yeah. Dog mess. Yeah, that's awful, isn't it? I mean, just, we know this. This is good etiquette. Anyway, clean up after yourself and your dog. And no, you can't poo in a hedge, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> what about when you caught short and you do want to wee up a tree? Well... People do it, don't they? I mean, it's well, men do it. Men, well, yeah, <laughs> men, men do it. You not met my wife. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's toilet blocks on the campsite. Why would you do that? There's no need. Prostate issues. <laughs> well, get a pitch near the toilet block then. <laughs> Barbecue. Use like. the toilet in the camper van. Uh, that, good point. Just don't do it. Yeah. Oh, what well. if it was your garden? Uh, it's not a garden. It's a pitch. Yeah, but it's someone's garden, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. I've been told off. We're going round his house and weeing up his tree. I love, uh, <laughs> I love a barbecue. Dogs, I, though. On, you yeah. love a bar. Well, hang on. Let's before we get to barbecue. Yeah. Sticking with dogs. Some campsites, club sites, have a rule where the dog has to be on a five meter red lead. It looks like a washing line, and, and attached to a corkscrew, which is screwed in the ground, so the dog stays on your pitch. And the red lead is red so that it's an it's an approved lead and it's visible. That's the idea. You can buy them, on, well, you buy them everywhere, online. We sell them in the shop. And on, on a lot of club sites, that's the lead that they want your dog on. And they want the dog to be kept on a lead and this particular lead. You can use your own lead as well, of course. Uh, but if the dog's going to be just chilled out, lying on the grass, then you need to check whether that type of lead is a requirement. And on these sites, dog owners actually do pay attention to dogs must be kept on leads because every open space where I see that sign, dog owners don't bother to comply. So motorhomers and caravanners are nicer people, clearly. Yeah, generally, I think we are. We're fairly law-abiding, rule-obeying people. Um, check w When you're booking the campsite, if you're taking a dog, check the dogs are allowed as well. The same with kids. There are campsites which are adult only. Um, so check the kids are going to be you know, welcome. That's a thing. Mm. Uh, okay then, barbecues. Okay, let me get back to barbecues because I do love a barbecue. I like to stand there grilling like any any man does, but uh, I like the gas ones because you can just switch them on and go. Um, but a lot of people insist on charcoal and lighting it. And if you're all lined up in your pitches, you know people are having a, a barbecue. It's smoky, isn't it? I see. Yeah. Well, you know the answer. Invite them along. What through the smoke? <laughs> 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 hello, hello. Get them to bring their burgers on. You'll join your barbecue. But, but it's true. But even you know, it, it, a small amount of smoke. If it goes over your property, maybe even into your camper van. Yeah, it leaves an, an odor. It leaves a smell, it does. doesn't it? And, and it's worth noting that sometimes barbecues like that are not permitted. So the, the disposable ones that you put on the ground are going to leave a square burnt grass tile. If you know what I mean. Um, I've mentioned before when we sold a, an American motel, we emptied a load of house bricks out of a locker that we'd forgotten were in there. All this extra weight we were carrying around, they were in there to put these little barbecues on. Um, once the barbecue's lit, they don't tend to smoke. It's only when they're getting going and, and dying out that, that that's when they tend to smoke. So, yeah, just check the rules of the campsite. Same with open fires as well. Open fires, sometimes campsites will rent you or lend you a fire pit. Uh, and they'll sell you logs or give you logs. Uh, and it, it's going to vary from campsite to campsite. So just check the rules when you're booking. And if you're not sure, when you get there, ask. And of course, most of us barbecue uh, in the evening. In summertime, it doesn't matter. It doesn't get dark here until about 9.30 at night, 10 o'clock, does it? Uh, but at different times of year, it gets dark at different times. And the easy thing is to just switch the headlights on, isn't it? To, to give yourself a bit of light. But that's a bit of a no-no as well, isn't it? Well, that's just going to annoy people, isn't it? Just buy a torch. You know, buy, I mean, most leisure vehicles have an awning light on the side, so that's going to illuminate your pitch uh, and give you some light to work and live by. And that's, you know, completely um, acceptable. But, yeah, flashing your headlights, I mean, that's a, that's a special kind of campsite. <laughs> I thought we should stop talking about dogs. You need a mask for that type of campsite. <laughs> yeah. So when I uh, when I come onto the campsite, then I park. I'm slightly on the white line. Uh, you know, I, I'm making a bit of noise. I've got children, but they're they're, they're not very well behaved. I let my dog run free. Uh, <laughs> I've got the uh, headlights on. I get the barbecue out. It's quite smoky. Oh, and like I've got some loud music. I'm not the sort of person you want, am I? You're a dream guest. You are. <laughs> 
I, I suppose it's, it's all common sense. It's what what would you do at home, really? Of course it is. Of course it is. It's just being living at a human level um, and considering others. And and I think generally the people that partake in going on a campsite do that. Uh, we've seen a bit of difference over the last couple of years and. This episode came about as a result of several campsites saying, Matt, please can you just talk about campsite etiquette? And so here we are, guys. And I know that campsite owners will have other items on their lists of things you can and can't do and they want you to do and want you not to do. But most campsites will lay the, their rules out or their guidance on their website before you book you can read it and they're there to make sure everyone has a good holiday and if you go into a campsite where groups aren't welcome or children aren't welcome because it's an adult only site and you're a family of six then don't book it go somewhere else you will find a campsite that you love we have found several uh, and we favor as i've said before the simpler campsites that don't have the clubhouse and the bar so they are generally quieter campsites and you know what type of experience you're in for if you're going to go to a site where there is a you know it's got a skittle alley and a bar and an arcade area you know, at one of these big corporate sites you know the type of experience you're likely to have at midnight as everyone goes home uh, we avoid campsites like that we've been to them you know with big pools and the tubes and the kids love it uh, but we love going to simpler campsites where there's a loo block uh, a shower block somewhere to empty the toilet and get fresh water and it's a field with you know might be on the on the edge of a cliff uh, near a beach and there's plenty of places to go walking cycling and so on those are the type of campsite locations we favor um and often we're with the children if we're not with the kids then you know we're off walking uh, and we will be on the lizard point um or down at beer or you know somewhere close to us where we can go and have the weekend we want to have and I suppose you can, when you book, you can check the website. Uh, but we do have a great British tradition in this country, uh, don't we? And I'm very much aware that you said that some campsites have said to you, hey, can you do a podcast? And this is why we're doing it. But the great British tradition of signs. I mean, you can look at the website, can't you? You can think you're booking the right thing. But you get there and there's a sign on the door as you go in. And there's a sign on the pitch when you go in. And there's the sign on the loo block saying, don't do this and don't do that. It is a very British thing. It is. There are not all campsites are, are the same so read, no. the, read the reviews some campsite owners were given a laminator for christmas let's just say that <laughs> <laughs> but it's true isn't it it yeah. is true uh, and it's very easy to get consumed by that as a campsite owner yeah. uh, and try and manage uh, i mean i don't own a campsite no. but yeah i've worked with several and trying to, particularly over the last couple of years we were trying to manage how many people are in the loo block at any one time you know pegs i saw an ingenious idea uh, with pegs and you had to grab a peg and peg it to yourself and if you were wearing a peg you were allowed in the loo and then as you left you had to leave the peg behind no pegs you've got to wait i thought what a great idea those kind of rules have been relaxed undoubtedly the toilet blocks are all open again uh, campsites are, are utilizing more of the space welcoming more people there of course there are rules and guidelines but there are some good practices that hopefully this episode has you know, inspired you to follow it is common sense there are some real technical things like driving on or reversing on leaving space for your aqua roll that's you know that's stuff you learn another one is leave no trace now that applies to campsites as well as it does anywhere you you park and stay but please clear up after the campsite after you leave yeah people aren't there to tidy up after you no and it doesn't take much just as you you know, drive off the pitch um, you know, you may have left some dead grass behind that's as a result of being under your awning mat or your levelling ramps. There's nothing you can do about that and the campsite will accept that. Uh, and uh, and that's another thing as well. If you're taking an awning, tell the campsite. If you're taking a car, tell the campsite. They might want to charge you for that uh, because you're taking up some space, uh, but let them know. And when they say awning, often it's referred to a caravan awning, which is a proper tent that bolts on the side or slides on doesn't bolt but it attaches to the side of the caravan on a motorhome an awning refers to the sun canopy and campsites often although not always are less worried about the motorhome awning it's the caravan awning and the reason there's a charge is it's a fixed entity that is going to take up space and they may have to invest some time effort and possibly some materials and money in repairing the grass after you've left and you're basically doubling up the amount of space you're using and there's the guy ropes and all the rest of it yeah that's right that's right so just to wrap up then quickly be aware Read the guidelines on the website uh, for the campsites you're going to. Read the reviews. When you get there, be sensible, be nice, 
Uh, you're, you're with uh, people of a like mind uh, uh, than you. Don't be antisocial. If you've got pets, stick to the rules. If you've got children, well, they're kids. Everybody loves kids, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose the underlying uh, message is just be nice. Be nice. Enjoy yeah, it. Enjoy yeah. your holiday. There is a risk you're going to catch the bug. My advice is you might need to consider recruiting a handyman for all those DIY jobs at home because if you do get the bug, they are not getting done. <laughs> You're not going to be spending weekends <laughs> at home. Well, thanks for listening and watching the uh, podcast, the Motorhome Matt podcast with me, Keith Gooden, and our expert, Motorhome Matt Sims. Don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, remember, we always like to hear your questions. Uh, we haven't got any in today's podcast, uh, but that doesn't mean to say that the next time you couldn't be asking Matt the questions. So thanks very much, Matt. You're welcome, Keith. And to ask a question, just go to the website motorhomemat.co.uk forward slash ask Matt. You can record your question there. Just click the orange button, speak your question, check it back and press submit. Or you can just fill in the form and which will send us an email and we'll read your question out on the podcast and do our best to answer it. And what about your socials? You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search Motorhome Matt. We're motorhomemat.co.uk on Instagram. And we're on YouTube. So if you want to watch the podcast, you can do so on YouTube at Motorhome Matt.